Hey everybody, Sarah here. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. This will be the last installment to the Enduring the Wilderness series. And a lot of times when we are in a wilderness season or any season for an extended period of time, we can start to feel like God's forgotten about us, you know, or that he's abandoned us. And we just feel like he's just left us in this season forever and that he just forgot about us. And the devil will definitely plant those seeds and those thoughts in your mind. But the thing is we have to be intentional about transforming our mind with the Word of God and to begin to remind ourselves of the faithfulness of God. And understand when we feel like God has forgotten about us and we don't transform our mind with the Word of God, we're going to start taking matters into our own hands. And this can really apply to any area of our life, right? If you've been single for a long time, you, God, why am I still single? Have you forgotten about me, Lord? You know what? That's okay. I'm going to go get me a man. I'm going to go, I got this, guys. Since you want to take your time, I got this, Lord. God, why am I still jobless? You know what? I'm going to go get me a job. The first job I find, I'm going to go get that job. No, no, no. The thing is, is this not what Sarai did? As we can see from that story, when we take matters into our own hands, we actually end up complicating our situation even more and we end up having to live with the consequences of our discontentment and our disobedience. When it's always in our best interest to just to trust the Lord, no matter how difficult it may be or how long we have to wait. And I just really want to look at a story in the Bible of how the Israelites thought that God had forgotten about them and just to take away a few points from that story that we can apply today. So let's look at Isaiah 40. And obviously I'm not going to read that whole chapter, but I do encourage you to go and read the entire chapter to get a better understanding and just to make sure that you are studying for yourself, right, in your own time. But I'm going to do like a quick overview and just kind of pinpoint a couple of verses, but I'm really focusing more so on verses 27 through 31. And in verse 27, it says, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? So why in the world would they think that God had forgotten about them? The thing is, in chapter 39, Isaiah prophesizes of how Israel is going to be exiled into Babylon. So we can see from verse 27 that because of that, they thought that God had abandoned them. And the purpose of chapter 40 was really to be comfort to the people of God. So starting just in verse number one and all the way through verse eight, God was speaking words of comfort to his people. And starting in verse nine, it kind of shifts to um, talking about the greatness of God all the way through verse 26. And this really leads me to my first point. When you feel like God has forgotten about you, remind yourself of who God is. Remind yourself of the greatness of God and his character. Again, in verse 9, the Israelites are told to behold your God. And I really love that. And I really just, can we just pause there for a moment? Behold your God. That is something that we all need to do on a regular basis. To just sit and see God for who he is. To truly study God and to know who he is. And to respond to him in light of that. Then Isaiah goes into how Israel was to behold God, to behold him as a loving shepherd, as the creator of all, the God of all wisdom. And he goes into more of God's attributes. And again, I just want to pinpoint a few of those verses. But um, more so, Isaiah 40 is known for the famous verses at the end, verses 29 through 31. But the thing is, you have to understand that before those famous verses at the end of the chapter, Isaiah told them of the character and the greatness of God at the beginning of the chapter. The thing is, we have to understand God's character and the greatness of God and be comforted in that first, because it all starts with understanding who God is. Because the thing is, how could the Israelites be comforted in Isaiah telling them that they who wait on the Lord will renew their strength if they first did not understand that God is everlasting, that he's the creator of all and that he's the sustainer of all. Once you understand God's character, it's so much easier for you to place your trust in him and to place your trust in his timing and to be able to rest in that. Because if we truly understand how great and glorious God really is, how could we ever think that anything is hidden from him, that he's forgotten about us or that he's abandoned us? I mean, if he doesn't even ignore the stars, how could he ignore his children? If a single star isn't even missing, how could he bypass us? He truly is a good father and he is not going to abandon his children. In verse 28, it says that because God is everlasting and the creator of all, he does not get weary and his understanding is unsearchable. And this leads me to my second point, which is to trust that God will give you the strength to endure. 
And I know that's kind of long, but trust that God will give you the strength to endure. So now that you understand God's attributes, you can have confidence in who he is and what he says he will do. You will trust him when he says that he gives power to the faint. And to him who have no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And I want to point out that the word wait in those verses in the original language means to wait, to look for, to expect, or to hope. And I really love this quote that I found in my commentary that says, Faith in God's promises empowers his people for endurance. The thing is, because God is everlasting, his strength will never diminish. The beautiful thing is that when we wait on the Lord, God gives us the strength that we need to endure. But notice that God can only give strength to those who are weak. And take note of how this even foreshadows what Paul would later say in 2 Corinthians 12. When I am weak, then I am strong. God's power can only be made perfect in our weakness. But how is that? How can God's power only be made perfect in our weakness? Because the thing is, Christ's power can't rest upon us if we're prideful and we think that we have all the power that we need and we are sufficient in ourselves. Because if we think we can live this life without the Lord and we can handle everything in our own strength, then that really we're saying that we don't need God. But just keep in mind that God opposes the proud. Because the thing is, God's power cannot be displayed in us if we're not first weak. If we want God's power, then we first have to admit that we are weak and to surrender to God. Because when we're weak, we're really allowing God to fill us with his power. Then we are stronger than we ever could have been on our own. Because the thing is, God never took away the burden from Paul. He strengthened him under the burden. And God displayed his strength through Paul's apparent weakness. And I love this um, quote that I found in my notes. And it says, we really don't believe God's grace is sufficient until we believe we ourselves are insufficient. Hmm. Those who wait on the Lord will have their strength renewed, or in, a, in its original language, it means to put on afresh. The thing is, this strength will be fresh because it's God giving us his strength. When we wait on God, we won't get weary. We'll actually soar because we'll be receiving his strength. So if you find yourself weary, it's probably because you're not waiting on, hoping in, and looking towards the Lord but something other than him. And just remember that God never forgot about the Israelites. He didn't forget about them while they were in Egypt. The thing is he had a purpose to them being in Egypt for 400 years. He had a purpose to them being in exile in Babylon. And he has a purpose to you being in the very season that you are in and for the time frame that he's allotted you to be there. And we already discussed the purpose of the wilderness at the beginning of the series. He has not forgotten about you. It is outside of his character. He is a good father and he cannot forget about his children again. Just trust that God will give you the strength that you need to endure as you wait on and hope in the Lord and look towards him. I really pray that this video and this entire series was an encouragement to you as you're going through your wilderness series. And until the next series, grace and peace.